during at least a few of the days spent to record this video, I was sick. Most was like, why do YouTubers feel the need to disclose this information? No one of you would just be like, oh, their voice is off. I wonder why that is. A wise man by the name of PJ Iggles once asked the question, how many species are there in Smash Bros? And then he deleted the video, which was all the way back in the Smash 4 days, so I think it's time for a do-over. Rules will largely be explained as we go, but it's worth knowing that, like he did in his now deleted original video, I will also be counting characters that are only seen as part of another character's moves. Really sells the a remake of a video you've never seen vibes. Mario is, of course, human, but he features Cappy in his side taunt and Flood in his down special. Cappy is a monitor. Flood. Flood is alive. Flood is sentient. Flood can talk. Flood dies at the end of the game. Of course, while well, Flood is alive, Flood isn't biological, which means that they kind of clash with our definition of species. Which means I will simply be expanding our definition of species to include mechanical entities. For mechanical species, I'll be going by in-universe distinctions, which is secretly what I've been doing with the biological species this entire time, because some of these don't get too specific with the nomenclature. So what is Flood? Since seemingly the only part of their body Flood can control is their voice, which doesn't get any clarification upon a game, I'm just gonna label them as the they are. Donkey Kong is a car. Well, you are looking, Nintendo made the Kong family their own species. Link is Hylian. So anyway, did you know that their sword has a girl inside of it? Her name's Fi. I can get having questions about the sword girl, but trust me, it is simpler if we let all of the various sword people count. So this was a bit human. Once. Then she got adopted by the Chozo and given their respective DNA to help survive the Chozo environment. Then much later, she got Metroid DNA from the vaccine because enough people on the Orion team were massive conspiracy theorists that thought this was actually how vaccines work. Now, Samus is a very important Metroid by the name of Metroid Prime. Mm. So one of Samus' power armors. This technically makes them a cyborg, but I'd argue they're more akin to what's ever going on with the Master Yoshi species is Yoshi. Probably is their own thing, even if it is also Manite space. The question is what that thing is called. With the games, the best you can get with the in-game material is a theory about Kirby maybe being this other thing. And even then it's questionable if that counts as a species and not just some metaphysical importance of their existence. If you go with non-game materials, the anime refers to Kirby's species as Star Warriors and honestly, that's probably the best we're getting. Kirby's down special cycles through a variety of things, but the only one with any life to it is the frog. But Kirby's neutral special allows them to copy the abilities of other characters' neutral specials, which means that for every species that appears in a neutral special, I have to go through them now instead of during their respective characters segment. This means that Toad, almost five Pikmin, Banana, wrong story, Duck and Chua, wrong story, and Pyromethus Swords would technically have to be counted here. The species of Toad and the Pikmin are all eponymous. The Duck Hunt Shooter are implied to be the source of the records on Duck Hunt's attack, hence human. And the Minados, without going too deep into the lore, they're like metaphysical extensions of the power of these three things called Trinity Core Processors, which are like supercomputers powered by draining power from heaven. At a certain point, they started manifesting bodies even though they were already implied to be somewhat biological. Also swords, they made swords. You can choose whether to count these swords as part of the Aegises, but that just kicks the can all the way down the Pyra and Mithra's moveset, and removes the Monado. I'm sorry, this section about a guy who can copy over his abilities got derailed by the law of an RPG. I promise they won't happen again. Fox is a fox. Pikachu is a Pikachu. Luigi is human. I think. This is human and so are the two kids that show up in his final smash. Captain Falcon is human. Jigglypuff is a Jigglypuff. Peach is human. As mentioned earlier, Kirby stole her toad, but with her down special she can introduce a few other species. There's of course the turnip, as well as Mr. Sand and a bomb, which can also be called. Yes, the final smash summon species, but I'm going to avoid counting dead things because at that point you're counting anything organic, and I don't want to say that Mario's overall instantly adds cards to the species as well. If you're wondering about the turnips, then know that there are a few frames where the turnips are still in the ground and 
presumably alarmed. This is also human and also has all of those things. Bowser is a presumably very deformed Koopa. Us climbers are human, but they summon a polar bear and pterodactyl incidentally when they use their final smash. Who could be Sheikah, but they're probably Hylian. Ocarina of Time Zelda is shown to have powerful magics, but I doubt she would or could go as far to change her DNA just for a disguise. There's also the question of if Sheikah are genetically distinct from Hylians at all, or if they're just a different race from them. Tell us to seek but without all that magic nonsense. So highly. She can also summon forth a possessed set of armor. It can hypothetically be like the Master Sword, but it absolutely is not. Dr. Mario is human. Perhaps the most human out of a soul. Pikachu is a Pikachu. When I know what's weird, Falco isn't a falcon. He's a pheasant. Half is human, and so is Rosina. This should clue you in onto the fact that Fire Emblem lore is boring. Future Free out here who has not yet recorded and is still in the scripting stage and just did not want to separate that joke. Lucina most likely has another species inside of her via a thing called Holy Blood. Holy Blood is gotten when a blood pack is made between a dragon, in this case a divine dragon, and a human. It can be passed down for generations. It's possible that Holy Blood doesn't involve any actual blood from the dragon and is your generic divine gene entity, but that, as illustrated prior, it's boring. Young Link's highly, but at least he keeps things interesting by having a fairy shop in one of his tombs. Ganondorf is a Gerudo. In his final smash, I'm more willing to say that a DNA change actually occurred, given the differences between pig and man is much greater than the difference between woman and woman ninja. Mewtwo is a Mew. For some reason, it's only the melee Pokemon that don't share a character and species name. What is human? It's likely that his unknown mother is half Ice Dragon, but that's veering too close into theorizing territory. I'm going to be avoiding theorizing entirely in this video, since if you veer too far in, you end up saying shit like Bowser Jr. is a boom boom. Some the same as Lucina. Mr. Game and Watch is a human. But to what measure is a human, really? Mr. G.A. Watch does not have flesh nor bone. Instead, he has a simple on-off state on various LCD screens. Can this really be considered to be the same as you and me? He can't move beyond his set screen. Can't play soccer, can't play an instrument, can't enjoy fine dining. The same goes for its collaborators. The turtle, fish, and octopus are a more limited existence than the man himself. But and I is the same species as Kirby, which I have irrationally declared to be called a Star Warrior. It is an angel. Its final smash features two unicorns named Foss and Lux, but what's more important is Palutena's guidance. These are an interesting edge here since they technically don't appear, we just hear their voices and look at these punch punch avatars on their remotes. Coming or not doesn't matter to the overall count since the only character unique to them, she has a species who is somewhat not unique, but it does set what's called a dangerous precedent for Snake's codec calls. Actual future for your hair, like from editing the video. Apparently Alucard's in one of these. He's half human, half vampire. Duckman is an angel same as Philip. So same that he's literally a clone! Majora's Suit Samus is literally the same person as Samus. In retrospect, Dark Pit same this pales in comparison. Mario is human. This is human. Really, I know Metal Gear Lore as well, but not in this case. In fact, the only curse placed upon this moveset, species-wise, is the inclusion of one S-Toad as the call for Falco. He is a frog. I think it's York. It's like human, but using a different proper noun. Pokemon Trainer is human. Their Squirtle is a Squirtle. Ivysaur is an Ivysaur. And Charizard is a Charizard. Can I just invent a word to say that their name is the same as the name of their species? The Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard are all kids though. Diddy Kong is a Kong and I am already wondering about the taxological aptness of the term Kong. Lucas is a human, same as that, but has a lot more accomplices. Obviously is his cover grab snake, rope snake. There's also his final smash which brings in Kumatora and Boney, one of whom is a dog because Mother 3 is a sad game. But what you may have forgotten about is his character entrance featuring Mr. Saturn Table. Mr. Saturn Table is a confusing character, so to keep it quick, I'm just going to say that yes, I think they're alive, and yes, I think they are their own unique species compared to Mr. Saturn. Sonic is a hedgehog. While King DDD is commonly agreed to be a penguin, this is not confirmed by any official material. But could he still be a penguin anyway? Let's review the facts. 1. King DDD is small. This is due to his relation with Kirby, who is notoriously 8 inches or 20 centimeters tall. King DDD is just over 2 Kirby's tall, which makes him about 42 centimeters. That's barely outside the range of any penguin species, 
with glass penguins being too big and the eponymous little penguins being too small. 2. DDD is in a weird location for penguins. My issue doesn't stem from temperature, I just talked about Galapagos penguins earlier, but distance inland. Greenland seems to be a grassland ecologically, which differs from the habitat of most penguins, being beaches. However, in Castle DDD's most recent appearance, it's right next to a large body of water, though the body of water does seem to be more like a lake than any kind of sea. Fact 3. Master Sakura can do whatever the hell he wants. His side special involves a gordo, another thing I'm going to declare a lie. His character entrance also brings in four worldies, who he quickly <coughs> disposes of. Olimar is Hopitashin, a species that is always less humanoid than you think. Alice Copite, which is essentially that, but from a different planet and slightly more humanoid. While Kami may have stolen all the phone pigment, that's something Kirby can never take, and that is the wing segment. Its final smash also brings in two more, Robo snapping back down on the planet, and an AI-infused rocket ship flying away. Lucario is Kinsta. Rob is a toy. Surely I don't have to count them, right? To Link is Hylian, and has a fairy tone of his own. Wolf is kinda Kinsta. Villager is human, but brings along with them a lot of things you wouldn't expect, like grass, a tree, gyroids, and some tanukis. Mega Man is a robot master. Rush is also a robot master. He may be a robot master dog, but he is a robot master nonetheless. His final smash then goes on to introduce six to eight different characters depending on how you count it. Going left to right, top to bottom, Proto Man and Beta are both robot masters. Mega Man EXE. X is a replica, even though the name doesn't fit. So I like how a dog that bit you is still kind of super familiar to Laris, even though that means friendly wolf dog. Mega Man and Volna is a carbon. Star Force Mega Man is a fusion of a human and an EEM being, and Mega Man EXE. On the surface level, Mega Man EXE is a sentient program called a Net Navi. However, he is also the digitization of a terminally ill child, Hamikari. There's also the matter of how he's physically manifesting because, you know, digitization. In the last Battle Network games, there's these things called Kami Bots, which allow Net Navis to manifest in the real world. But do we need these to explain the manifestation? Smash is a largely non canon crossover game. We needn't concern ourselves with these things. I'm so sorry that this section about an expressionless blue guy from Smash 4 got derailed by the law of some sci-fi RPG. I promise it won't happen again. We think Trainer is human? For context, I'm writing this the day I record instead of approximately 7 days before. I just straight up skipped Rosalina in my original script. Her situation is a little hazy, but she's generally agreed to be a human who just so happens to have the power to reset the universe at the end of Super Mario Galaxy. This is something explained by Actor Theory, proposed by Nintendo.com user Shigeru Miyamoto, that all Mario characters are like actors in a play, doing roles depending on what the game calls for. Aluma is Kinsta. There's also the matter of the Grand Star, which has eyes implicating livelihood. For this I have two things to say. Yes, I'm going it, and being a star must be a hellish experience. Little Mac is human. Greninja is Kinsda. Ebrola is a me, like Kinsda, but 30%. Me Sawfire is another me. Well, yes, me fire costumes are just costumes. The me Sawfire exclusive wreck me costume decides to randomly throw in a living biological grams. You think this is really anything, but no, because lore. So Gramps and Pyro could technically be the same species. I'm deciding not to go in depth because do you really want to hear me blab more about Xenoblade 2 lore? And because I think the lore clearly illustrates that. The Aegis are their own thing that got stapled onto the blade system. Me Gunner is also a me and maybe a cyborg if you're Dutch. Pat Lieutenant is a deity, but like, we already talked about her during that segment. Pac-Man is a Pac-Person. He is also going to be the death of me. This is because of his uptaunt, Namco Roulette, which shows off, frankly, a bunch of characters. The only way to do this while keeping my sanity is via a lightning round, which will be commencing shortly. Santa Blue is a ghost. King ain't got no law. Puka is kids though. Mappy is a mouse. Top Cop ain't got no law. Gil is human. Clovis is human. Runner is human. Paquette is Kinsta. Red Baron is a bird. Valkyrie is a god. Hirati Michima is human. Don Chan is a drum. And the Prince of All Cosmos is a cosmic being. One of his songs features fairies and his smash attacks feature ghosts. There's an argument to be had about the applicability of species to the undead, but I'm letting them slide just because I feel like it. Also, not to get political, but after robots have gotten constitutional recognition, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing advancements of rights for other non eukary art groups. Robin is human, but specifically got holy blood from a fell dragon. Unfortunately, it is implied that the fell dragon he got that blood from is just a divine dragon that's messed up due to some Frankenstein shenanigans. And human sacrifices. Never forget the human sacrifices. Shock is a harms, a difference that's barely law relevant. 
He also has a god inside of him. The god also happens to be a human scientist to have a gamer god when he hit a button that destroyed Earth and Greater Doom Pocket Dimensions. Unfortunately, Kirby sold the Monado, but Shulk still has the final Smash Bros. 3 to use enough on, a Hums, and another Hums that has almost the exact same god situation as Shulk. Bowser Jr. and his friends are all Koopas, aside from the explosive wind-ups that I'd say just barely crossed the line into being robots. Of course, the band Duck Hunt duo itself consists of a dog, a duck, and a stolen two soon zapper, but their down special summons five gunmen who are, in descending order, a human, a human, a human, a human, and a shape-shifting fox fur. Ryu and Gen are both human. This doesn't mean that Street Fire lore is boring, though. Cloud is human, albeit with some Genova cells injected into him in what is probably the least weird part about his origin story. Corn is half silent dragon and half human. In the original P. Diggles, he decided to not only list half silent dragon as its own species, but list half human as its own species separate to human. Bayonet is human. Technically, the two Bayonettes are different characters, but they're both human. There's also the two demons that she summons, Inkling and Skizda. Ridley's species is never named, and I'm not just gonna call it Space Pirate, so I'm gonna have to sell for Kizda. Simon and Richter are both human. King K. Rool is a crocodile. Isabel is a dog. And Cinema and Piranha Plant are all Kizda, with Peter Piranha presumably also being a Piranha Plant. Joker is human, and so is every other member of the Titan Thieves, sends the Cat Morgana. Persona has complicated lore, but it's not that kind of complicated lore. All four of the heroes are also human, so the hero from 4 is half Zenithian, and the hero from 8 is half Dragovian, and has a mouth. Unfortunately for me, the final smash features every other hero from the Dragon Quest series. Fortunately, the only non-humans among them are the ones from 9 and 10. 9 is a Celestarian who would later become a human, and I think it's safe to say that they're still deforming the final smash given the Halo. Then there's 10. The plot of 10 has the hero starting against human before dying and using the reincarnate as one of the world's five civilized races, none of which are human. However, they show none of the characteristics of any of those five, and I am to assume that their appearance changes when they reincarnate, right? I think my only recourse here is to just say that they're somehow human despite the reincarnation plot and call it a day. Also, one of their tones has a slime in it. Banjo is a bear, Kazooie is a bird, and this giant statue that they summon to finish off their opponents is a Jinjo. Terry is human. Violet is human. Freehouses has his own system of inheritable stat boosts from dragons that almost perfectly mirrors Holy Blood for crests. The only difference is that the dragons are called Nampians and it explicitly involves DNA transfer. Also, Violet's 7th and 8th also are a version of them that has fused with the same Nampian they got that blood from. That same Nampian also appears in their final smash. That same Nampian is also possessing them. Min Min is human. The final smash summons like 6 different people, but thankfully the only one that isn't obviously human is Master Mummy, who is a mummy. Now I know that these comments may age poorly, but Master Mummy is specifically a mummy of a human, right? So wouldn't that just make him human? I know I listed the ghost as their own thing, but that's only because there's no biological material. They're made of ectoplasm. With Master Mummy, the biological material is still there. That's the whole point of the mummification. Steve is human, and so is Alex. The zombie is, of course, a zombie, but how does their zombosity work? The likely explanation is that it involves an infection. And I think that rules it out from participating in the species count. When we declare zombosity and infection, what we mean is a virus or some other microorganism that makes people zombies. If we do allow microorganisms inside a virus to count, then there's a similar problem with the dead species, where we are immediately inundated with thousands of species due to Mario's complex microbiome. Unless you go mad running off into the endless night after getting a whiff of the seductive scent that is law, then Enderman's an Enderman. The final smash, House of Boom features creepers. Sephiroth is human with Genova cells, same as Cloud. There's a distraction involving the original Genova body, but thanks to Sephiroth's final smash, we can ignore it. Her and Mephra are the same as from Kirby's segment incarnate. Zodaya carnation does negate the rest. Rex also shows up every now and then in their moveset, and here's the fairy. Yes, he's heavily implied to be at least part pawned, but the specifics of how he got torn in blood means that he'd only have like a third of a gene from them. Kazuya is human. Stands for this one gene where he becomes a demon. So it is human. He also has various other humans inside of him, such as Kyrie and Ventus. Other non-humans inside of him include Nobody, Roxas and Shion, and the AI, Sora. There's also this thing about Keyblades shooting their masters and I'm going to allow if solely we can end on what else but a sentient sword. Originally I had written a Pokey Rock-esque sequence to end off this video, but I kept having to rewrite some of it because of I realize new stuff and but anyway, here's like all the stuff up to me I Human, AI, Bonitor, Kong, Hylian, Chozo, Metroid, Fox, Yoshi, Jigglypuff, Swordspear, Rick, Star Warrior from Toad Red Pikmin. 
Yeah, little Pikmin Purple, Pikmin Blue, Pikmin, Aegis, Pikachu, Wet Pikmin, Turnip, Bob, Bob, Mrs. Saturn, Koopa, Fairy, Divine Dragon, Mew, Gerudo, Pterodactyl, Pheasant, Polar Bear, Inadmissible, Fish, Octopus, Dog, Turtle. Yeah, I, I ended it on an odd number of lines.